this is Dr. Bruce Keneal, and I have another exciting video for you today. Exciting to me, because it's about my favorite topic of treatment of the temporomandibular joint. Previously, I had done a YouTube, which is on our website at uh, www.kenealdental.com, and it would be helpful to first review that video. It goes into the symptoms and some treatment of the temporomandibular joint. Many people want to know the technical aspects of what really is going on in the joint. And that's what this is more or less a follow-up to that first video. And I'm going to get a little more technical today about what I do uh, for treatment of temporomandibular joint dysfunction. So, on this first picture here. This is of the right side of the skull and in the top uh, left you'll see a little highlighted white area with a red dot and that is the temporomandibular joint uh, and then you can see it on the skull there. You also see a couple of teeth highlighted on the skull and then in the right part is a dot where the teeth are coming together. The bottom line is the jaw, the teeth, the temporomandibular joint are one system that ideally all work in harmony together. In other words, when the teeth come together, they should be in harmony with the temporomandibular joint. When there is something out of position, then we have temporomandibular joint dysfunction. And that's what I'm here to help you with. Here is uh, um, a cartoon of TMJ clicking or reciprocal clicking. And I'm going to show you this on uh, my uh, little puppet like thing in a, in a couple minutes. And but how this works is the dark area is the disc which is a cushion between the lower jaw, the mandible, which includes the condyle. So that little roundish thing next to it is the condyle and the upper skull. And then as you go to the right and around the circle clockwise, you can see what happens to the disc. I'll describe this better in a minute. Now, uh, another type of dysfunction of the temporomandibular joint is called a closed lock. This is where the disc is anteriorly displaced and it never gets into place. Uh, these people can't open very wide. The normal maximum opening is about 48 millimeters plus or minus. People who have a closed lock can only open about 32 millimeters. A way to test this is take two fingers and with your fingers uh, you can put two fingers in the mouth and that will uh, be a closed lock more or less. If you have three fingers from when you open real wide, that's normal opening. And that's a way you can test yourself to see if you're limited in your opening or not. To back up a, a, a bit, let's talk about what percentage of people with temporomandibular joint dysfunction have a disc problem because that's what I'm going to talk about. Uh, some dentists years ago uh, calculated that 93% of temporomandibular joint dysfunction problems are related to the disc. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is trying to get that disc back into place. Now here is my little dog and pony show, more or less, uh, that I have to show you on this instrument. And here, um, what we're showing you is movement of the lower jaw. There's the disc uh, between the condyle, which is part of the lower jaw and the upper skull. That, what I'm pointing to now, is your ear canal. Oftentimes, people have symptoms of the ear canal. The rubber bands are the muscles, and the muscles get in spasm. Now, a maximum opening, as I've just shown you, is about 48 millimeters. 
the disc I'm moving around right now to show how that works in the joint. Now you can have rotation against that disc, and now you're getting translation with the disc. And those are the movements that you get in the joint. You normally can rotate about 32 millimeters against the disc, and to open any wider, you have to get translation to open up your 48 millimeters. Now this is an anteriorly displaced disc, where the disc is forward uh, and displaced, and this is what true dysfunction is all about. And as you open and close, the uh, disc should be between the condyle and the upper skull. But uh, there is the anterior displaced disc when your teeth together. And then as you open, it's supposed to pop into place. Now here's a closed lock where the disc is anteriorly displaced and never gets into place. Now it's back into place um, in the proper position. So that's what... Uh, the movements happen in the temporomandibular joint area. Now, when you come to my office for a consult, um, I will go into greater detail. I didn't want to bore you too much, but some people want to see, well, what is really going on in the joint? Now, after we treat you with splints, and we talked about that in our prior um, video, um, then we need to establish an occlusion in harmony with your temporomandibular joints. And this is one example. This fellow here had extreme wear of his lower front teeth. His front teeth on top were being chipped. Um, he was really struggling. And then after we treated him with our splint therapy and got his temporomandibular joints comfortable, we established an occlusion a bite in harmony with his temporomandibular joints and got, also got him a gorgeous smile. So now he's in great shape. This uh, gentleman, same situation. On the left, you see where he had worn his teeth down severely and uh, because of temporomandibular joint problems and he had symptoms. And then we restored him. Uh, we opened up his bite from where he had overclosed it gave him a gorgeous smile, and now he has a bite again in harmony with his temporomandibular joints, and he has no more headache symptoms and other symptoms, and he's very happy. So, if you think you have a temporomandibular joint dysfunction and would like to talk about it, actually our first visit is a free consultation uh, to just talk about it before we really do anything. So if you're interested, give us a call. We're here in Jacksonville, Florida, and the phone number is area code 904-731-2162. And have a wonderful day.